You might think that one of the keys to making really nice renders in Blender is to be as physically accurate as possible. If you think that, then you'd be surprised to find out that VFX artists actually fake things all the time. Sometimes we do it because of artistic reasons, sometimes we do it because of software limitations, and sometimes we do it just because it's easier. So today I thought I would go through maybe five or six of my favorite little hacks that I like to use in Blender, which aren't necessarily physically accurate, but do give you nicer results. Before we get started, I just want to really quickly say that I have a couple of different sales going on my courses. My new course, the Exterior Masterclass, you can save 20% at Gumroad with the code LAUNCH. We can save 40% on my other courses using the code FLASH. Volumetrics are a really great way to add an extra sense of mood to a scene and to give it some real depth and to make things look more realistic. I use volumetrics in almost every scene I do, especially if it's an outdoor scene. This is my T-Rex video that I made a few years ago, and all you have to do is just create a cube, make a principal volume with really low density, and plug this into the volume of the cube material, and that's gonna give you something like this. Now, while in general, it does usually look very good, it has two big drawbacks. Number one, is that if you have any light sources which are close to the volume it tends to get really blown out if you switch to the render here you can see that we have this sort of blue orb in the sky and that's just because there's a light source just up here kind of faking the lighting on the back of the t-rex and that's catching the volumetrics the other problem is that it's slow this is just about 32 seconds per frame so what you can do instead a lot of the time is you can just fake things by getting a emission shader and giving this a really low value somewhere around 0, 0.0 something. And then you can plug this in instead. It looks almost identical. And what you've essentially just done is made a glowing cube, which is just emitting a tiny little bit of extra light. It gives you kind of the same idea, but now if we have any light sources inside it, they won't get uh, lit up essentially. So that light, which is up here now, is not affecting the volume and also it's much much faster instead of almost 32 seconds if we look at this render instead this is 23.8 seconds so it's more than 40 percent faster and a lot of the time it's going to look better now there is something to be aware of with this um if you you want the effect of light passing through the volume to be visible you're not going to get it with this for instance if you have light streaming through a window it isn't going to be visible if you use an emission shader. And the other problem is because it is an emission shader, you are actually lighting up the entire scene. So all of the shadows and things will be slightly brighter when you do it this way. But a lot of the time, this is the solution to getting faster renders and better looking renders sometimes using volumes. Alternatively, you can get rid of the volumetrics entirely and just fake the whole thing sometimes in compositing. Where to do that, if you go down to the View Layer tab, you can see that there's a pass here called the Mist Pass. If we enable this and go to the World tab, you'll now see a new drop down here called Mist Pass. In order to see what this is going to do, you want to go into uh, Rendered Mode in the Viewport, come up to here to the Viewport Shading and change the passes to Mist, and this will show you what the Mist Pass is going to look like. I'm going to change the Start Distance to 0, and I'm going to go to something like 50 meters. 55 maybe and that basically gives us a gradient from the camera and the further you get away from the, the camera the lighter things get so if we render this out it should be faster than the volumetrics and it should even be faster than the emission pass was earlier on that was something like 23 seconds so I think this should probably be maybe 18 seconds something like that Let's see how quick this is done 16 seconds so we've knocked quite a bit of time off the render once more. And if we go over to the compositing tab, we now have this mist pass. You can take a look at this and see it's exactly what it looked like in the viewport. So let's get a mix color. And we'll just get the original image to make this a bit faster. Plug this into the bottom, into the top, sorry. In the bottom, I'm just going to get this color blue, which I've already selected. I'm going to put this into the factor. And if we take a look at this, you can see that the gradient is now basically being applied with the colored blue. And the cool thing about this is if we add a color ramp, we put this into the factor, 
we can actually make changes to this after the fact. So if we decide that we want loads more fog, then that's something you can do. Or if you want the fog actually to be more subtle, you just need to make changes to the color ramp and you will instantly be able to make those changes. There are times in Blender when you need to add a hole or a cavity to something, but it just isn't practical to add it with actual modeling. Maybe because it would mess up the geometry of the asset, or maybe because you just don't have space to add an actual hole back there. So what a lot of people think to do is uh, either paint the hole on or to add it with a material, right? So you just select the area where you want the hole to be and you add a new material, assign it and make it black because holes are black, right? So that should look good. And it looks terrible, obviously. Uh, it's getting light and it's got shadows cast onto it and it doesn't look like there's an actual hole there at all. And you can try playing with the roughness and that's not gonna help. From some angles, bringing it down might help, but from other angles, it definitely won't because it'll obviously just be really reflective. What you wanna actually do instead is go to the specularity and just bring this all the way down to zero. And that's gonna essentially create virtual Vantablack. If you've seen Vantablack paint, it's like a paint that kind of absorbs almost all light. And that's what we've just done here. And if we add a point line to the scene and put it right next to it, it still looks like a hole. We can bring this up to like a thousand and it's still just gonna look like there's a hole back there. We can get rid of that. Another tip, which is worth mentioning, because it's kind of similar. If you're working with photo scans, you can see this burger just looks kind of waxy. And that's because it has specular highlights, which are kind of burnt into the texture, right? They're baked into there. And then you have specular highlights that Blender's adding on top. So same thing when I'm working with photo scans, I almost always bring the IOR down on the specularity at least a bit if not all the way down, and that just makes things look loads more realistic, like I've already done over here with these burgers. By the way, how cool is this uh, heat distortion effect? Check out the exterior masterclass if you want to find out how to do that. This is a room that I made for the first module of my interior masterclass course. It's supposed to be lit by the sun coming through a glass window over here. Well, as you can see, that's not really happening. It's a very dark room, and even if we massively increase this light to like 5,000, we get a little bit more light in the room, but not really anything. It's not making much of a difference there. So why is that? Well, as you've probably noticed, Blender's glass system in general just doesn't like to let much light through. So let's say we have a camera, right? Believe it or not, that's the camera in the scene. And we have a good old trusty cube. And we have a sunlight over here. Blender needs to figure out how well lit these pixels are, right? So it's going to send samples over here, but it doesn't want to waste those samples, bouncing them around in all these different directions where it's not needed. So to do it more efficiently, it sends out one ray, which is called the shadow ray. And the shadow ray just has one job basically, which is to hit the surface and then try and see if you can hit a light source. So it tries to go over to this light source in this direction. If there's uh, something in the way, if there's a box in the way and I can't reach it, then Blender knows, okay, well, we don't have to send many samples here because there isn't really much light here. All of the lighting that's going to hit this must just be bounce lighting coming from other places. But if it can hit this light source, then the opposite, Blender knows, okay, there must be loads of light hitting this over here. So what happens when you have a piece of glass in the scene? Let's say this line is a piece of glass. The shadow ray comes out, it hits, it refracts, and it misses the light source. Blender now doesn't know that this surface over here should be well lit because it's completely missed when it was trying to figure out where the lighting is. So if we take a look at the glass material over here, I've just got some smudges added in the roughness, but it's just a normal basic glass material. And what I'm going to do here is add in a transparent shader, and I'm going to mix these two together. Right now that will work to an extent, it'll let some more light in, but now the glass, this will be blurry, but if we actually took a look at the glass, it wouldn't look like real glass anymore because it's half uh, transparent. What we need to do is add in a light path node that has this output here called is shadow ray. So we mix these together. And what we're basically saying here is if you look directly at the glass, 
just treat it like regular glass. However, if you're calculating the shadow ray, ignore the glass entirely, just act like it's translucent. Don't let the shadow ray bounce off in the wrong direction, just ignore it entirely. And if you do this, you get all of the nice lighting in the scene, and usually it actually speeds up renders as well. I often find that transparent materials in Blender just don't reflect enough of the outside world. This is especially true when you're working with windows. I mean, I have a scene here which has absolutely tons of light. I made this incredibly bright day, and yet it's very hard to find an angle where we can actually see any of the sky or anything reflecting on the glass, which is not what you would expect in real life. The way that you can fix this or cheat it kind of is if you go into the glass settings and you find the IOR, all you need to do basically is put this up. If we just go to say two, which I think is what I used in the real render, you're just going to see a little bit more of a reflection on the glass. Now you do want to be careful with this because if you go up to like five, the glass is going to start looking really fake and way too shiny, but you can probably go as high as three sometimes and it's still going to look really good. If you watched yesterday's video where I showed you how to improve a basic scene with a drink and a couple of Coke cans, I used the exact same trick on the ice cubes to make them all visible. A while back, I was working on a Jurassic Park horror short. I didn't get around to finishing it, maybe one day I will, but I did make some shots for it, including this one here with a guy in a helicopter flying over an island with a massive amount of trees on it. There's actually 280,000 trees in this render and it rendered out in just 47 seconds. So how is that possible? Well, the answer is to use something called a billboard. A billboard is basically the CGI version of a cardboard cutout, right? They look like three-dimensional real trees. You can see in the viewport, they all look pretty good. We can add in a sunlight here. Let's just turn this up to like five. And if we rotate this light, you can see that the trees are actually casting shadows and they're getting light as you would expect them to. But if we take a look at the individual particles, it's just planes which have ro rotated 90 degrees. So they kind of look three dimensional. And it works ridiculously well. All I did to make these is I took some tree assets, I rendered them out with a transparent background and imported them into Blender. And then to make sure that it kind of fades out in the right way, I've just mixed the material with a transparent shader and I've used the face in, uh, output on the layer weight node. Now you can see here as we rotate the camera, it changes the color depending on whether you're looking at it straight on, whether you're looking at it from the side. And that will make it disappear as the camera turns around so you can never see any side of the tree apart from the one that's facing you. The way I took this to the next level is to just get a object info node and I put the randomness into a bunch of random colors and then I mix that with the tree. And what that means is once the tree gets duplicated, you know, however many times, hundreds of thousands of times, it has some slight color variation and it looks more realistic. So that just about covers everything for this video. Make sure you check out the links in the description where you can find out more information about the different sales that I've got going on my products at the moment. Thanks very much for watching guys. Hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in a day or two with another video.